We are joined now by Bill Nye. You were in, you were inside the control room. Well, uh, in the uh, the area, yes. When when this flyby happened, because I'm watching the the uh, yeah. engineers react, and I saw, I saw you there. Yes, That's I was there yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So your your reaction to the latest images we're seeing now? It's just cool because <laughs> there are no impact craters in the one sector they spent. First of all, it's ten times the resolution we had yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I mean, pick a number. 100,000 times more resolution than we had in 1930. Well, or... throughout human history. So, yeah. well, so talk about these impact craters a little bit. This is the image you're talking about right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. So where... all, all the water on Earth yeah. came from outer space. And it came from objects out in this region of the solar system. So uh, by learning about this region of the solar system, it, we hope we can answer this deep question that everyone has asked. Everyone, where did we come from? If you want to know where we came from, uh, you have to explore space, and specifically, you want to explore this region of the solar system. So it's really exciting. They've just released this one little teaser image, and then you, you yeah. think in the rest of them we'll see those impact craters. Well, yeah, when you look, I mean, uh, you don't you, have to you be know an we'll expert geologist, yeah. but when you look in the, in the uh, upper sort of mid-right of the image, which would be... Uh, like you see them in here. Right here. Those right. look very much like impact yeah. craters to us. But the sector they released uh, is down here. Now, you guys... Uh, somebody made a joke yesterday in the press conference. You guys have been sending these images back at 56K, <laughs> which would be like an old phone modem. It's a right? dial-up, yeah. But AOL. it ain't no 56K, employing a double negative for comedic effect. It is about 1K, about 1,000 bits per second. How do these images get back 3 and billion miles? It's compl-freaking-cated. But here's your desk, your beautiful plexiglass desk. There is a rule, uh, I don't know if the viewers know this, that all newsrooms must have plexiglass yeah. desks. And here is one, and uh, it's bigger than the dish that's on the New Horizon spacecraft. This is. And that dish is beaming with extraordinary accuracy back toward the Earth. And we have a thing called the Deep Space Network. And the thing are, is an array of enormous radio telescopes, generally in three places. Goldstone, California, Canberra, Austra Australia, and near Madrid in Spain. And these, as the Earth turns, there's always one pointing at the heavens. It's amazing. And so this tiny, slow signal gets back here. And the real exciting thing last night, if you're into it, and I hope some of you are geeking out, uh, everybody was waiting for the handshake tone, which came in about 9 last night, a little before 9 p.m. last night. And it meant that the spacecraft had gone past Pluto undamaged. So, wait, you call this a tiny, slow signal. That's not a tiny, slow signal, is it? Well, it's going at the speed of light. Yeah. But it's still, the bits are coming in at uh, a billionth, uh, half a billionth of the speed as they are in your computer or your electric watch. But there. the deal is it's being, it's being captured by one of these three stations. Yeah, all the time. Oh, so all three are not capturing it simultaneously? No, some of them are facing one is the wrong way. It's okay. just, it's that simple. When the thing is facing this way, you can't. You can't get a signal from Make it. Make sure your mic doesn't Yeah, I know. Yeah, we got to be careful. Yeah, there. It looks it's like a, it's okay. It was right a, now, it was a demonstration it. more than a. It was an incomplete <laughs> model. So why is it so important that that it then got past Pluto in in shape? Oh, because it was reasonable, not uh, necessarily likely. It's about a one in five thousand chance. Uh, the number was two in two in ten thousand. One in five thousand chance that there be rings. They're like we're oh, just right. too faint yeah. to see. Yeah. And this spacecraft would go in at. Um, at uh, almost 50,000 kilometers an hour and hit a grain of dust and you know, <laughs> disintegrate kind of thing. So, but it didn't. And now it just floats off into the, the outer word, reaches it, of the solar zing system. Zingin', zingy, zing, zing. Now, in four years, we are going to re-aim it to another object. There's three, there were three objects. There can the, the, the PT-1, PT-2, and PT-3. Yes. These are Pluto target one, two, and three, but oh, okay. two is falling out. It's going to be one or three, and these are other Kuiper or Kuiper belt objects that are out there. And so these are probably icy bodies that we just don't know much about. And so people say all the time, well, why are you looking at these? Why are you exploring? What are you going to find there? We don't know, okay? That's why, That's we're, why exploring. we're exploring. Yeah. Then I remind everybody that this mission was done for $750 million. Mm -hmm. That's not even a cup of coffee once in 15 Especially years. Especially after Starbucks just went and, uh, and prices. And everybody's running around today 
arguing about Iran and this deal we're doing about nuclear power and this and that and weapons and this and that, NASA is the best brand the United States has. Can we talk about getting to Mars then yes. as well? So, because Pluto's fascinating. It's I cool. Mean, it's, it's been really cool to it's talk cool. about and see, but I mean, the, the focus now would, would seem to shift to Mars and the question of when, when we can get there. So, the Planetary Society, as you may know, we had a workshop and we got really, we got the real people together, okay? And this is what I like to say about the Planetary Society. We are not crazy. We brought the real people together who really study this problem and the really good orbital opportunity, Earth and Mars, will yeah. be 2033. Without increasing the NASA budget at all, just adjusting it for inflation. And as we've all agreed, yes, we all agreed that we're going to let go of the International Space Station in 2024, yeah. or maybe 2028. If we really did that, you wouldn't have to increase the NASA budget at all. And humans would be orbiting Mars in 2033, landing perhaps the next orbital opportunity or, or 2039. And what does it cost to get to Mars? Well, it depends. <laughs> but if you just kept it steady at 18 billion from now to 2033, you'd make it. 18 billion per year. Yeah, and bear in mind, that's what NASA doing all the other crazy stuff, cool stuff it does. This brings out the best in all of us. This inspires humankind to achieve great things. And by the way, at a very reasonable cost. You have to sell me on that. Uh, right on, man. So wow. anyway. This is a big day, and I know there's a lot going on in the world. There's, and we had an all-star game, right? and that's important too. Yep. But uh, this is something that people have talked about my whole life. And yesterday they got pictures after flying for nine and a half years, four and a half hours to get rate right at the speed of light from the spacecraft. It's just, it's, whoa. It's awesome stuff. It's cool. We've now blown out the entire CBSN broadcast to have this discussion. All right, well, sorry but, about but it's that. A good, <laughs> it's a good thing to discuss. Um, Bill Nye, thank you very much. Thank you, man. Let's change the world.